let me start uh, by thanking um, um, Thomas and Elio for putting this together. Very nice. Um, let me hide this one. Yeah, very nice. Do you see my slides, Thomas? Um, uh, this very nice workshop. So um, as I said, I'm, I'm going to change very um, um, dramatically the topic. Namely, I'm going to talk about protected um, DRA crossings and how uh, they survive the stress test uh, that uh, uh, we can uh, um, uh, make by applying a, a upward interaction to them. And so on the way, I'm going to show uh, unexpected uh, resistivity exponents for these uh, liquids. So these results have been obtained uh, primarily by uh, Niklas Wagner, um, PhD student in my group, uh, together with Lorenzo Kripp and Bjorn Trautzettel in Würzburg, Alessandro and Sergio. Um, also contributed to this recently uh, published um, paper on that. So in, as a consequence of the Lorentz invariance, um, um, if you are not in a solid, uh, your electron will obey um, um, the Dirac equation. However, um, in, on a lattice, we um, in some sense have uh, much more freedom because we have to um, uh, to, to fulfill the, uh, the lattice uh, symmetries rather than the uh, Poincaré group. Uh, and uh, um, we have, uh, nevertheless, even though the Lorentz symmetry is therefore broken, we have particles uh, that fulfill uh, a formally similar equation. So you all know uh, Dirac semi-metals uh, and vile fermions. Um, so in some sense, we have less constraint to fulfill. And uh, we can hope that this way we can enlarge the zoo of uh, um, excitations uh, um, and find something that has no counterpart uh, in high energy physics. Um, the, 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 the most simple example uh, is uh, um, taking a, a one of the uh, simple cubic uh, groups and go to a high symmetry point like this pi 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 point here. And uh, you can find uh, in uh, some of these uh, uh, space groups, uh, uh, three-dimensionally reducible representation at this K point of the little group, which means that three eigenvalues have to meet at this point. So this is a, it's not an accidental degeneracy, it's really a robust crossing um, that is protected by lattice symmetry. Uh, in particular, in non-symorphic groups, uh, the, um, this manifests uh, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, uh, very many ways. Um, and we can have also four dimensional irreducible representation um, that when you add the time reversal, uh, give rise to eightfold degenerate Dirac point like the one depicted here, um, shown in this beautiful paper uh, on science uh, uh, by the Bernevik group. So these are really interesting objects because the, um, underlying uh, uh, bile phase of that would really be a, a higher spin object like a uh, Rorita Schwinger uh, vile fermion uh, um, in, in a solid. So the question is, since these, are, these objects are protected by lattice symmetry, uh, how do they react to uh, electron-electron interaction? And to address this question first, I, um, I look at a specific example, namely uh, this bismuth copper oxide, uh, which uh, uh, belongs to a non uh, symorphic uh, uh, space group uh, 130 here. This is actually a beautiful um, uh, system, is uh, even more one or one band hubbard than the uh, the system, the nickelate discussed by Carson this morning. So the copper are sitting in the middle of these uh, flying UFOs. And you see here four bands because we have four, because the uh, unit cell hosts four of these coppers. Uh, but these are really separated. These are dx square minus y square bands that are beautifully separated by the other ones and by oxygen bands. And uh, if you go to the A point of this band structure, and this is a, a blow up of that, you see on the ZA direction, four eigenvalues that uh, merge and, and, and meet at the A point. Here you see actually a four, not eight, because we have inversion symmetry and time reversal. So all the bands are um, doubly degenerate. 
and uh, um, and the question is, of course, uh, how uh, does this double Dirac uh, point survive electronic correlation? So uh, we apply DMFT to that. The system is three dimensional, um, and at small u we get this, the the typical uh, uh, small uh, renormalization of our uh, band structure. At intermediate u, we increase the incoherence character until uh, we reach the band width, uh, and uh, we eventually break up this degeneracy. Um, the important point to, to stress is that we have not broken this uh, by a symmetry uh, breaking uh, term. U, does, U is compatible with the symmetry, of course, and therefore this is really a high uh, a strong coupling uh, many body effect. And it also shows you that uh, um, it, it, it descends from the presence of, of, of an energy cutoff um, that allows you to reach this strong coupling uh, phase. So you would not never be able to reach this in a K dot P um, description with uh, uh, linear bands forever young. You always in that case, uh, stay in, in a weak coupling. Whereas here, because of the presence of this finite um, cutoff, we can uh, reach the mod transition. So let's further simplify the description of this. Uh, and let's just take uh, three-dimensional semi-metals um, whose DOS density of states can come from, for instance, an Hamiltonian of this kind, including an energy cutoff or a cutoff from the momenta that you see here. That's our parabolic DOS. We take uh, uh, the simplest possible uh, flavor diagonal, so diagonal in tau and uh, just opposite spin um, uh, interaction, and use as a DMFT solver the IPT. So um, that's the mod transition that I was talking uh, about before. You see it, it again uh, um, happens at uh, uh, what is typical. Uh, the typical scale of the of the bandwidth, and there are these colors that I'm going to comment uh, uh, on in the in the, uh, in the next slides. Before I do that, let me make a parallel of this result uh, with the conventional beta lattice uh, that you are used to. That's the uh, uh, probably uh, the uh, nicest um, uh, discussion of that in terms of resistivity exponents uh, that are uh, shown in this uh, in in with this beta value. This is um, uh, by a paper from uh, Dobrosalevich, um, from a paper by Dobrosalevich. Uh, uh, so you see um, the, the similarities. Uh, white, however, here, that is beta equal to, is very different from the white that we see here. So I'm going to comment on that. The two white color scales are very different. There is also a different extension of this red uh, region that also uh, uh, as a physical meaning, uh, as I'm going to discuss uh, in the next slide. So what, how do we get usually this beta equal to in the conventional case? Let, this case, this is really the textbook um, Fermi liquid argument. Uh, you can go to the uh, Fermi liquid chapter, chapter of your favorite book. If you take Pierce's uh, book, uh, essentially, um, it's, it's read very, very carefully and, and precisely the scattering uh, between two particles, the energetic of this uh, and the result uh, applying uh, simple Fermi golden rule considerations for the inverse scattering rate is uh, an angular part. It's very, very conventional. Then we have three powers of the constant density of state that you assume to have here. And then um, you have uh, um, um, the famous uh, uh, omega square and T square quadratic dependence. Okay, so that's what we use uh, usually to, to justify for a liquid description three dimensions because we say that the scattering rate between quasi-particle quasi excitations is smaller than their characteristic energy. Now, if we do this for the uh, quadratic parabolic density of states, actually I was surprised that this calculation has not been reported or published elsewhere before, um, it, it essentially amounts uh, uh, to calculate the imaginary part of the second order diagram is relatively easy. Um, and uh, uh, the change, the, the important change with respect to this calculation is that now you have this, uh, you see two, uh, so six powers more. And uh, um, following the notation of Pierce's uh, book, you have essentially three times this integral whose pole structure gives rise to a polynomial, not of second order, but of eighth order. 
That's now the omega uh, dependence, uh, omega to the eight and t to the eight dependence. And in between you have mixed uh, things. So, so you see that the low energy protection does not prevent the mod transition to happen. So that eventually you break up the degeneracy, but it has a, an incredible impact on the scattering of, of the quasi particles before the mod transition. So that, that's the way the system, the system manifests its uh, very high level of uh, degree of coherence because the scattering rate is, is super tiny. Um, this has a consequence, of course, on uh, um, resistivity. So and transport. So if we go to, uh, if we apply a Kubo uh, description, um, uh, so calculate the DC conductivity, um, then we, and, and of course here enters the Hamiltonian uh, that, I, that I showed you before, because we calculate the vertex, the current vertex in the MFT that we put in the bubble. Uh, now that's uh, uh, the bubble with dress greens function. And uh, um, we can essentially rewrite this Kubo result uh, in an effective Drude-like formula. I'm not doing uh, really uh, Boltzmann theory. That, 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 that's just an effective um, description that I'm using. And somehow the tau that enters here has the gamma that you have seen in the previous slide. So that's the polynomial, the eighth uh, order polynomial that you, that you have seen before. And there is another important difference with respect to the conventional case, and uh, namely this N effective that is now a temperature dependent object. So if you have a parabolic DOS like this, uh, and you now look at the window that you select with your uh, derivative of the Fermi function, um, you see that now as a function of temperature, you pick up contributions that go like T square. Whereas if, if we were to have a constant DOS here, uh, and effective would not depend on, on, uh, on temperature. So, so tau would go as t to the minus two and you would get the Fermi liquid result. Instead here, we get this unusual t to the minus six. So if I want to summarize this in a table, the, sc the scattering rate gains six powers, the resistivity gains four powers. We have this six to two, which uh, in the second week of the Roland Garros is reminiscent of a, a tennis score. Uh, I could unfortunately find only for me playing tennis here. And, uh, um, and these six powers, um, um, these unusual powers do not only enter in the resist in the electrical resistivity, uh, they enter also in other quantities as we are gonna see later. But before uh, we switch to these other uh, quantities, let me analyze a little bit better uh, our colors in the phase diagram. So I said this white now is very different from the beta lattice white because it's a T6. And you see, I, I would like you to appreciate the fact that this is really all the way down to U equals zero. So this T to the six is not very close to the mod transition only. So it's really a perturbative result that we confirm with the MFT. And we see, of course, the mod transition, if we go this way, um, very similar to the way you would have imagined, uh, even though you don't have any quasi particle, uh, explicitly as a peak, showing up as a peak in the spectral function. But the Z factor behaves very similarly uh, to the case, to the conventional case. And then you can do these cuts um, for different U. And you see here the um, six powers. So you gain in, in uh, log log scale, you gain six decades here. And then you cross over to the linear in T that is this green region here. But if you, if you cut through a, a line that, that, that goes uh, over the mod transition, of course, you get this highly nonlinear stuff. And then eventually the, um, the activated behavior uh, at large U. OK, so I said um, that, that we also have other um, physical quantities that have unusual um, powers. That's very, uh, uh, for that, it's important also to go out of a filling, let's say. So this is the picture exactly at the Dirac point, if the chemical present potential is tuned exactly at the Dirac point. Um, if we go a little bit away, uh, then we relatively fast recover conventional T square, but there is an intermediate temperature regime of high power. This comes about because now you have essentially here, your Fermi level, imagine where this orange ring is sitting. And 
if you consider very low temperature, your Fermi function will select something that has a, a finite density of state. So this is essentially this blue, uh, the smaller blue dots, they denote uh, uh, data away from our filling. And, and you see here this gray dotted line, this is T square. Then if the temperature is increased, then you start to pick up uh, contribution from this vanishing quadratic um, density of states. And this becomes steeper, you see, we don't reach maybe T to the six. The, this is of course a, a, a question of, of numbers, uh, how, how far you are and so on. But, but that, this is definitely a T to the four, T to the five um, power. And then you eventually recover um, linear in T. So we were very happy to see that data, uh, transport data for um, three-dimensional Dirac systems, like for instance, this uh, cadmium-3 arsenic-2 uh, from uh, the Princeton group, uh, Bob Kava, um, they, they follow this very uh, characteristic behavior that we uh, kind of predict uh, because there is a, a relatively clear intermediate regime in which uh, their data can be fit very well with the uh, T to the fourth. And this, the system has two Dirac points protected by lattice symmetry at uh, plus and minus kz, a specific kz value. This is not only for this system, there is also uh, a vial system uh, measured in group of, uh, uh, by Claudia Felzer uh, that shows this T to the fourth clearly in the intermediate regime. Of course, here in these cases, you are not, this is a, a, an interesting system because it has threefold fermions, uh, Dirac fermions and the vial fermions, but they are sitting relatively far away from the, from the Dirac point, uh, from, from the Fermi level, sorry. So somehow uh, this, the, the, way, the window where you observe these regimes are very, is very different. And this is also the case of a, a type two vial system that is similar to tanks and dietyluride. Um, right, I, I said about uh, I said that that we also have thermal uh, so other um, uh, uh, quantities thermal transport for instance the thermal resistivity behaves similarly uh, to the uh, electrical one but with the, with one power less so in a kind of acrobatic way uh, for low temperature we recover the Wittmann Franz behavior. Um, and also the, 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 the heat capacity is uh, particular, so fermionic contribution starting with T to the third. So somehow, in, in a way, uh, we have a, the unusual situation in which you don't have to go to very low temperature to highlight the fermionic exponents, but rather intermediate temperature would make them uh, uh, visible. All right. Um, so... Uh, for a little bit uh, for uh, on the technical side, uh, um, since also uh, Philip talked about um, vertex correction, uh, you know, um, of course, that uh, in current current response function in the MFT, um, uh, we have an exact can cancellation of vertex corrections coming from the fact that the velocity is the conventional case, uh, an odd function of the momentum, and therefore. Uh, the local vertex here makes the two sum uh, over uh, momenta completely independent, uh, and you can cancel any vertex correction um, of, of this kind. Um, you may, however, wonder how this works in these systems, because now the Hamiltonian is linear in K, so the velocity is constant in momentum, and therefore this, this argument would not apply anymore. Does this mean that we get versus corrections back in the uh, optical conductivity? Well, um, we have to consider the spinorial uh, structure of the velocity. And in our case, um, with the Hamiltonian that I've shown you, this is the spinorial structure. So that's an SZ, and then depending on which uh, um, component of the momentum I'm deriving with respect to, I get a, a, a tau Pauli matrix correspondingly. And this enters therefore now our velocity vertex, uh, so current vertex, but um, the, the U matrix, so gamma is also an orbital structure. So the U matrix that we choose in this very simple and um, opposite spin, same orbital interaction uh, would have a completely incompatible uh, uh, structure 
one, once you, uh, with respect to the velocity. So in this particular case of a simple interaction, we uh, would get a cancellation of at least all ladder vertex corrections, uh, just because in this product that you see here, between the, the gamma and the, and the uh, vertex, uh, the spinoidal structure is just uh, this way. So it has two diagonal blocks and two of diagonal ones. But of but course, you have, this... you have four minutes left of talking. Oh, about. thank you very much. Then um, let me jump to uh, two other points, namely where can we uh, reach these uh, uh, strongly correlated Dirac systems. I showed you some experiments on three-dimensional Dirac systems or valve systems that are not particularly correlated. Uh, in this poster that was yesterday presented by Shema, uh, you may have uh, uh, seen this uh, proposal for the realization. This is a bilayer of uh, tungsten diselenide. And it's interesting because we uh, deconfine flat bands uh, with this uh, buckled honeycomb structure. And this is really a Dirac um, fermion subject to a pretty large uh, interaction. And the beautiful uh, thing that we um, observe is a strong reaction to, of this uh, buckled potential to an electric field so that we could, in principle, tune all the way down uh, this bilayer through uh, band touching here, but also through the uh, to, to the to the point where the staggered potential is completely balanced. So here on this bottom line, you would have sort of uh, the, uh, this zero mass Dirac fermions, and this mass transition here uh, would be the one that I've been discussing. Of course, if we go from three D to two D, um, I anticipate Matthias Voita question probably, uh, we have to uh, be careful that uh, no local effects of the self energy become important. And, uh, um, and that's um, something that we are um, studying now uh, also together with uh, uh, Lorenzo Crippa and uh, the group of Massimo Capone in Trieste. Um, so there is a very interesting, uh, this is a two dimensional uh, model. This is again the stagger. Either you can interpret this as either as a stagger potential or as a local splitting between two orbitals that causes uh, a, a gap in your Dirac spectrum. And you see that varying this m, there is a, a, a trivial to non trivial uh, topological phase transition. And uh, you see now that's another uh, color uh, scale that again is white, but now white corresponds. Uh, look at this scale here to the ratio between non-local self-energies to local self-energies. And this is really very, very small. This is a cluster DMFT, so we can, in principle, have all kinds of compatible with the cluster size, of course, uh, no local corrections. But it really tells you that in this all interesting region of, of the topological phase transition driven by M, by a finite uh, mass of so staggered potential, um, you uh, so single side DMFT does a, a fantastic uh, job and gives you a local self energy um, that, uh, that that is enough um, uh, to to describe the physics. Whereas here, down here, where this uh, black is start to dominating, is starting to dominate. Uh, here, really, um, when, when you are no longer helped by this uh, strong local. Uh, staggered potential, then the self energy has to be uh, k dependent in two dimensions. It's very, very important. Here, the, the, the mod transition would be uh, really dominated by uh, no local effects. So, here you would need uh, uh, in two dimensions at least uh, uh, cluster DMT or, or D gamma A or other methods that can deal with that. So, that's my conclusion slide. Um, I, I, I uh, showed that we can break this low energy uh, protection by uh, going to uh, um, to strong coupling, uh, uh, even if the interaction uh, is a symmetry preserving perturbation. Uh, but the interesting thing is that uh, before the mod, we effectively remove a lot of uh, uh, low powers in uh, in the temperatures, and this shows up uh, in uh, uh, lifetime transport and thermodynamics. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.